Irish depth chart for 2022, folks. What is it about the depth charts? Well, we did them last year as well. We're basically having a look at the international season, in this case for Ireland, to see who played in what positions for how long, what's Andy Farrell's strategy? Is he going for rotation and trying to build depth and numbers? Is he going for consistency and trying to build a kind of cohesive main starting 15? Where is he in that spectrum for Ireland? We're going to go through that. We're going to go through the win-loss record for 2022. What was their most selected 15 and whatnot? And um, yeah, you guys can let us know your thoughts. There's certainly no right or wrong way for coaches to build their team, right? Some coaches love a bit of rotation. Graham Henry was famous for rotating. People criticized him for it. John Mitchell, another former All Blacks coach, was pretty famous for keeping his team very consistent and maybe sometimes to his detriment because if guys got injured, then many didn't have a ready replacement to go in. But what about Andy Farrell? What's he been doing with Ireland? We certainly looked at Ireland last year in 2021. And I would say on that spectrum, Andy Farrell was very much in the consistency camp rather than the rotation camp, but we'll have a look and see if the same is true for 2022. I should add, remember, Ireland also sent an emerging team to South Africa, and like they played a few kind of non-test games against the Māori All Blacks and uh, All Blacks 15 and whatnot, so there are some games which were kind of Irish games which were not test matches, which are not included in these numbers. We're only looking at test matches. Like, those non-test matches are the next best thing. They still kind of count to building depth, but there's nothing quite like a test match, right? So, yeah, we'll go through the Irish squad uh, for the year, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on uh, how strong or weak the side is looking, how deep you think the depth may be. We will start with the win-loss record, though, and I would say, I mean, we'll start with Ireland for a reason, because they're the number one squad, uh, number one ranked team in the world. Uh, they only lost two games all year. You're talking away to France and you're talking away to New Zealand. So, I mean, there's no real shame in losing those games. Obviously, I mean, France had a perfect record with uh, a slightly different um, set of opponents. But, I mean, goodness me, people were saying, oh, Ireland didn't get any trophies this year. They got the Steinlager bloody cup or whatever it is that we play for here in New Zealand in those July tests. So they certainly got their hands on some silverware. Not many teams come to New Zealand and get an away series win. So, yeah, man, away series win. Big win away from home at Twickenham. Uh, they held at home against the likes of South Africa and Australia, kind of three-point wins. And that's kind of one of those things about really good teams is that even when they don't necessarily blow you away, like when they blew a, a short, uh, understrength Italy 57-6 or, you know, a poor Wales 29-7, even when they don't fire on every cylinder, Ireland still managed to find a way to win. So, like I said, I think generally... That's the sign of a pretty good team when you can still find a way to win, even when maybe not everything's going according to plan. But anyway, let's have a look at the depth. We'll start with the front row, possibly the most important part of the squad. We're looking at jerseys one, two, and three. And uh, you can see those guys in green, those are your starters. So for loose head, you're looking at Andrew Porter. He's getting 60% of the minutes this year. Kian Healy's there in blue, Dave Coins in yellow, Jeremy Lockman's in purple. So there's been a bit of depth built. But largely, Andrew Porter, who's been getting a lot of game time, more so than 2021. Remember, 2021, uh, Porter was kind of making the transition from tight end to loose head. But now he is firmly established as the guy in the number one jersey. For the number two jersey, it's an interesting story because you've got Dan Sheehan there with like almost 70% of the game time. That's a crazy amount. But... You've got Rob Herring there in blue, and then Ronan Keller has the interesting one there in yellow. Missed most of the season through injury, right? Or the, the 2022 year through injury. So um, he's kind of like underrepresented, I would say. Like, you know you've got a class player in Kelleher, but the fact that he's been injured and Sheehan's taken over means you've essentially got two classy guys, even though the numbers wouldn't show you that for 2022. Uh, and then Rob Herring, with about a fifth of the time, has kind of stepped up as the, the kind of backup guy as well. And then Tyke Furlong, goodness gracious me, almost 80% of the game time. I mean, since Porter has gone to the other side of the scrum, Furlong has just gotten even more game time. Like, he had a lot of game time last year, but it's just even more now. I mean, Finley Bealham's there in blue. He's getting less than a fifth of the game time in Tom O'Toole uh, in yellow. So... Very much, I would say, in that front row, the case of these are my starting guys. It's Porter, it's Sheard, it's Furlong. If Keller has fit, maybe there's a question mark about that. I don't think there's any doubt about the two props. It's Porter and it's Furlong. It looks pretty strong. The only thing about that is, if you lose either of those guys, I mean, especially Furlong, uh, but also Porter, I don't think you have a replacement like you have with the Kelleher. 
Um, so you can see why Porter and, and Furlong get as much game time as they do because they are just absolutely class operators. So yeah, it's an interesting one. The locking situation is a bit of an interesting one as well because obviously Ian Henderson spent much of the year injured as well. So your main guys there, number four, Ty Byrne, absolutely clocking up the minutes and he clocks up minutes not just uh, on the loose head side of the of the lock and uh, lock and the scrum, uh, but also on the other side and in the loose forwards as well. He'll he'll take minutes wherever he can get him, very flexible. And then James Ryan there in the number five jersey. So we'll start with four. So Tyke Burns getting almost eighty percent, and then you got the likes of Ryan Baird, uh, Kieran Treadwell, Prendergast, a bit of James Ryan as well. I think once, and then um, Joe McCarthy as well. So it's pretty much Tyke Burn with a few cameos from other guys. The other side's not quite as dominant by James Ryan. I seem to remember he missed a bit of game time this year. Henderson is there in blue. We'd obviously usually see him get more than that kind of game time in a calendar year, but uh, with his injuries, uh, we've just not quite seen it from him. Ty Byrne is there in yellow, and then Kieran Treadwell there in purple. So, I mean, Ty Byrne, like I mentioned, absolutely ever-present. I still feel like the guy gets in the right. Now we've been on the Lions tour, and, uh, you know, he gets named in kind of teams of the year and whatnot, but I still feel like he doesn't quite get the billing he deserves. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of similar to last year's numbers, to be honest, with the locks. It's just they have trialed a few of the younger guys uh, to get a taste of test action without really getting their teeth into it too much, you would say. Uh, loose forwards, it's, uh, it's also a bit of a change from last year. If you start with number eight, it's a pretty simple equation. You got Kalen Doris with like more than half of the game time there, and then Conan gets the rest of it. Conan, Stunder, and Doris all kind of had a bit of that last year, because remember Stunder, I think, started the year and then retired. So it was a bit of a mixed bag. Whereas this year, the, the option seems to be clearly Doris is the guy, and then Conan is the bench guy. That's generally been the case. So uh, it, is, it is pretty clear. Um, that, that Doris, who, who also appears at number six, has largely kind of made that number eight jersey his own. But talking about making the jersey your own, goodness gracious me, look at number seven. You know who that is. That's world player there, Josh van der Fleer. He's got more than 90% of the game time. Nick Timoney gets a little bit of game time at the end of the year. But it's just, just for Josh van der Fleer. I guess if he's playing as well as that, there's no reason not to play him. And clearly Andy Farrell has just kept playing him. It's absolutely dominant. Like... You will not see many players just get that much game time in any one position ever. I think last year, Van der Fleer had just over half of the game time in the number seven jersey. Like Will Connors was there and a few other guys kind of popped in every now and again. But man, that is that is very, very dominant. And then uh, the six jersey has also shifted a little bit. Peter Armani's there in green. He's gotten a bit more game time with Doris playing more game time at eight than he has at six. But Doris is still there in blue. Then you've got Conan, Byrne, and then even a bit of Deegan. Uh, there at the end, so yeah, you've kind of seen the likes of Reese Ruddock and as I mentioned, Will Connors kind of fall out of the picture for now, but those guys are kind of still floating around if needs be, but uh, yeah, I do kind of like the balance, I mean, Doris's contact meters and whatnot are always massive, and then Van der Flair with his tackles and even scoring tries this year have been huge, and then Peter Romani with his line-out work, and he does get a bit underrated with how much he gets around the park as well, so um, yeah, that's uh, that's your back row for, for Ireland. Getting into the backs, you got to ask yourself, how reliant are they on Johnny Sexton? Well, if you're looking at the number 10 jersey there, he's only played just over half of the game time. And that's a pretty similar situation to last year. Some of the changes are you don't have Billy Burns featuring this year. Uh, your second guy is Joey Carberry. He's there in blue, Sexton's in green. And then uh, Crowley is kind of your new guy on the scene. There in yellow, I mean, obviously you've had a really little bit of the Ross Byrne towards the end of the year. And I think Jack Carney got like one minute. So it's one of those ones where, uh, again, maybe the depth isn't quite represented because you've got Billy Burns, who's had international experience. You've had Harry Byrne, who's had a bit of international experience, um, not even featuring here in 2022. But I mean, ultimately, we all know it's, it's about sixth. And if sixth is fit and it's an important game, he's absolutely going to play. Uh, the other guys are just kind of filling in. At this point, no one's really been able to compete with him truly for that kind of starting 10, have they? Uh, number nine, Gibson Park has taken the number nine jersey way more than last year. Last year, I think he was just over half of the game time. This year, he's looking at kind of four-fifths of the game time. And it kind of makes sense because when Ireland are on song, uh, Gibson Park is absolutely a key part of that. He keeps their game 
just absolutely moving forward. Murray is there in blue, and then Casey's there in yellow, absolutely kind of living off scraps. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say, man. Uh, Ireland don't look as good when either Gibson Park is just looking a little bit off. Like I feel like against the was it against the Australians, he wasn't quite his normal self, or um, or when he's not playing, just look a slightly different side as a Gibson Park. Just looking at the minutes, man, he's absolutely a key man. So uh, it's interesting because you know you'd think Sexton is the key guy, but in terms of minutes, he didn't get anywhere near as many as Gibson Park got. I guess Gibson Park's a wee bit younger. Uh, midfield wise, it's one of those ones where I'm thinking it's Aki, it's Henshaw, and it's Ringrose, right? And it's pretty much the case. Although pleasingly, we have seen a bit of the old big unit McCloskey this year as well. Looking at twelve. It's interesting that uh, Aki is there in green, and he's the first guy we come across who's the leading guy for minutes in a position who doesn't have more than half of the game time. He's just under half of the minutes in the number 12 jersey. Then you've got Henshaw in blue. Remembering Henshaw's, I think, missed a fair bit of the season through injury. And then McCloskey's there in yellow. I think in terms of, like, depth building, like if you were looking at a, uh, a breakdown which kind of looks a bit, I don't want to say nicer, but at least a bit more varied, so you're not totally relying on one guy. That one actually looks kind of uh, kind of pleasing. You've got three guys who've had genuinely a decent amount of game time. McCloskey's played just under a fifth of the game time this year, which is not bad. Remember, he got subbed one of those games when uh, he got injured when starting at 12. Then at 13, though, Ringrose is pretty dominant. He's had almost, well, just over 70% of the minutes. Uh, for Ireland there in the 13 jersey. Henshaw's there in blue as well. So Henshaw features in both. So uh, Henshaw, despite his injuries, um, you know, still, we combine those two blue blocks together. It's still a, a decent amount of game time. And then you got Jimmy O'Brien, James Hume, Keith Earl. So these guys have had a little bit of cameo time as well. I mean, Jimmy O'Brien was nice to see at the end of the year feature a few times in different positions, like going into a World Cup if you need that kind of Johnny on the spot who can genuinely cover half the back line. Uh, he may well be that guy. Outside backs, lastly, uh, again, it's a little bit more mixed. Like, you don't quite see those massively dominant numbers. Well, I mean, you do at fullback. If you look at fullback, you know who that is. 80-plus percent Hugo Keenan. I think that's down from last year. Hugo Keenan just wasn't given the 15 jersey to anybody last year. But he's had, like, four-fifths of the game time. You got Mikey Lowry, who's had a little bit of game time. Jimmy O'Brien, a little bit. Um, but it's pretty much been the Hugo Keenan show. He's very, very reliable. So again, it's reflected in the minutes. And then the wings, uh, it's James Lowe on the left. Remember, he's missed much of the later part of the season through injury. Mac Hansen's there on blue on the left, but he's also there green on the right. So Mac Hansen has played an extraordinary amount of game time this year if you combine those two blocks, the 14 green and the 11 blue. It's a, it's a lot of game time for Mac Hansen. Very... Uh, very reliable customer. Jimmy O'Brien features there on the left wing as well in yellow. And then Rob Balakoon, right wing, also uh, in yellow. And Andrew Conway, I forgot to mention him, in blue uh, on the right wing. So I do feel like outside backs, I mean, Keith Earls, I mean, Ringrose popped into the, the back three every now and again as well. Uh, you, you're kind of spoiled for choice as to um, as to who gets to go. It seems to be the low and Hanson show when fit but um yeah andy farrell certainly does have his options guys who have kind of fallen off the pace or just not been able to get to the likes of um uh jacob stockdale can't really get a gig uh, jordan lama can't really get a gig so these guys uh who have featured in the past and could feature in the future in 2022 have just found it really hard to um to push their way into the squad so Overall, you can see pretty much every position, barring 12 and 14, there's a guy who gets more than half of the game time. And generally, it's more than like 60% of the game time. Some positions, the extremes, Van der Fleer, Gibson Park, Keenan, you know, even like Furlong, you're talking like 80, around 80% or more of the game time this year. So very, very reliant on those guys. That's not to say guys who aren't getting minutes couldn't step up, but going into a World Cup, you would absolutely hate to see a Van der Fleer or a Ken or I think especially like a Furlong uh, go down. And um, yeah, like I said, I, I do think Andy Farrell is very much 
the consistency coach, and that's kind of backed up by his numbers. So what's the most selected 15 from Ireland this year based on the minutes? Well, it's Porter Sheehan and Furlong as your front row, Byrne and Ryan in the back, second row, and then Armani, Van der Fleer and Doris in the back row. I feel like if you asked most fans to name the most selected Irish team this year, you'd probably be able to do it. I don't think it would be that hard to figure out because those guys, as I said, just have featured so much. Uh, Gibson Park, Sexton, Aki, Ringrose. Aki, you may not think, you may think Henshaw, but as I said, Henshaw's kind of divided his time between 12 and 13 so much. He doesn't stake his claim for any one jersey. So Aki, 12, Ringrose, 13, Low Hanson, and Keenan. So that's a pretty bloody good looking team, man, heading into a World Cup. I mean, the average age is... I think slightly older than the average. Like, it'd be a bit younger than the Springboks, a bit older than, like, uh, some of the other teams like England and um, and New Zealand. But, you know, 28, 29. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's a, a couple of kind of senior guys in there. But it's uh, it's been a decent mix, I think, for Ireland in 2022. So there you go, folks. That's the depth chart. I did get, grab all that data manually. So there may be a few errors. I've kind of discounted any yellow card time. Uh, from their positions, tried to measure which guys were shifting to which position when substitutes came on and whatnot, just to try to keep it as accurate as possible. But um, yeah, there you go. If you think that was a pain in the backside, you might be a little bit right. If you want to buy me a beer, link down in the description. I appreciate that. But um, don't feel you need to, just in case you really want to. Um, but there you go, guys. You guys let us know your thoughts. How do you reckon Ireland are looking for depth? Any one position you think, man, if we get injured for this guy, we're going to be in deep strife? You guys let us know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.